If you want to upgrade the head strap on your Quest 3 or your Quest 3S, then really there's two main styles to choose from, either clamshell or halo. So which one is right for you? Well, that's what we're here to find out. And I'm going to be checking out Kiwi Design's brand new head straps, the K4 Boost and the H4 Boost, both of which boast a battery to give you hours of extra gameplay. Let's get into it. Before we go any further, I do need to point out that Kiwi Design did send me both of these to review, but they're not paying for or sponsoring this video, and so you will, as always, get my honest opinion. So here we have Kiwi Design's Halo head strap, the H form boost. Comfort-wise, there's lots of padding in here to make sure it is comfortable. So you've got this padding at the back for your back pad, which goes on the back of your head. That padding and also the PU leather continues through to this forehead bar as well. What's interesting about the forehead bar is that lots of other companies do this solid bar across the top, whereas they've gone for this sort of thin dual design. The advantage of that is it's going to help keep your forehead cooler because that probably is one of the negatives of Halo head straps is it can get quite cross or hot across can get quite hot across the top of your head there is a top strap across the top as well it's not padded though but i'm not too bothered about that because i'll tell you in a bit when i do the fit test lots of adjustability in this head strap though because on the back you've got this dial which means it's going to suit a big range of head sizes so it moves in and out and what's great about the dial at the back is that it's embedded into the back bar on the back here so if you're going to use this for say sim vr and you're sitting with your head back of your head against the back of a gaming seat or you're lying in bed or you're lying on the back of a chair you're not going to have this like turning knob digging in and making it uncomfortable so this is going to be a lot more comfortable if you're doing that kind of thing. You've also got another adjustment knob on the front, which changes the amount of distance between the forehead bar and this bar down here that clips into your headset. So you've got lots of adjustability, and that means that this actually is going to suit a large range of facial interfaces. Because one of the common things with, especially Halo style head straps, is some facial interfaces don't work with others. Um, I've tried this with a whole bunch of them. I've actually got the AMVR one here at the moment. That's really good for testing because that's got one of the biggest forehead bars across the top of the facial interface, which is really good for distributing weight, not so good for being compatible with Halo head straps. But because you've got that adjustability across the top, you can easily work with that. And that actually makes this one of the probably best combos of Halo style head straps to facial interfaces, because it almost creates this complete curve of padding that goes across your forehead and across your eyes and really does help distribute that weight. You can also adjust the arms as well. You can slide this up and down to put the headset either further or closer to your head as well. So all of that is really helping you to sort of dial in the ideal fit for your head and your face. And then battery wise, you've got these four LEDs on the top, which light up to show you how charged the battery is. And we'll get to the battery performance in a little bit as well. Fit wise, I found it really comfortable. The back padding on the forehead bar and the back, really, really comfortable to wear for hours at a time. Works really well with a multitude of facial interfaces, really good and comfortable to wear. The only thing I would say is you can't move this. Whilst you can move it quite a bit up here, you can't move it any further that way. So you do have to sort of play around with it a little bit to get the right fit for your head. But once you do, it's super comfortable. Oh, this head strap, which I talked about before. Yes, it's on there. Yes, it's not padded. I don't use it. I just took it off because you've got the forehead clips into the headset. You've got the forehead bar resting on top of your head. You've got that clamped into the back of your head. There really isn't any weight sort of being held up by this top strap anyway. Just take it off, makes it a lot cleaner, makes it a lot easier to use as well. And so here we have the latest Kiwi Design clam style head strap. And they've been doing clam style head straps for years. This is their latest version, which is an update to their comfort head strap that they had before. And there's some good changes here. One of which is the back. You've got that sort of blended in dial or adjustability dial into the back makes it good for having any gaming chairs or when you're lying down you've still got these pivot points here so when you're using it you can pivot that up to have a look around one of the things these don't do anymore which they used to do in the early days is they used to lock now they don't so it just kind of flops down a bit now which is annoying they should add that back before with earlier versions the cable would go from here all the way to there so you had to have this really big cable because it had to adjust depending upon how big or small your head strap was now, however, because it's integrated to pivot point here, the distance is fixed. So you've got the back pad, lots of padding on that, nice and soft, cushions the back of your head really nicely. You've got this nice wide padded top strap as well, lots of padding, same sort of PU leather as well, making it easy to keep it clean. Comfort wise, this is comfortable to wear for hours at a time. I mean, you've got the padding strap on the back, you've got the padding on the top. 
I've used Kiwi head straps for years and this is no different, it's just comfortable to wear. The battery on the back really does help to act as a counterweight to the weight of the headset on the front. For those of you that don't like clam style head straps or like the elite style head strap of the Quest 3, um, this is going to be your kind of thing. One thing to point out is that whilst both of these will fit the Quest 3 and the Quest 3 S, you will of course notice that on the side you've got that gap for a headphone jack. So on the Quest 3 S, because that doesn't have a headphone jack, you're just gonna have a gap there. That's not really the fault of this head strap. Everyone's gonna have the same problem. If you're thinking about upgrading the head strap, then also look at upgrading the facial interface as well, because if you upgrade the one and not the other, you're really not getting the benefit of both. So I've reviewed loads on this channel, so check some of those reviews out, check some other people's reviews out, and see if there's any that take your fancy. I would say that the most important thing though, above everything else, is that you find a comfortable head strap for you because there is no point in buying something that is uncomfortable and i would say in that regards neither of these head straps disappoint in that regards because i found them both comfortable to wear in general i would say that a clamshell style head strap has a tighter fit because you can really ratchet it into your face so if you're playing lots of action and fast movement games or well, you like that tighter fit then this style of head strap is going to be better suited for you halo style head straps on the other hand generally aren't as tight because the headset is kind of hanging down in front of your face so if you play less frantic games or you want less weight on your face then this might be the better style for you. Having said that, plenty of people are in either camp and don't like the other one, even though they do the other type of gameplay. So it really is personal preference. So one of the things that's really important for a battery head strap, regardless of which one you buy, is that it can deliver the power fast enough for the headset that it's powering. So when the Quest 3 first came out, a lot of the early head straps that came out were based on Quest 2 specs. And so they didn't deliver enough power. So you got some battery, but not enough to keep it as charged as it could be. Everyone's pretty much wise to that now, so you are getting some really good battery head straps. Both of these have 18 watts of output power and will give you about an extra two to three hours of battery life for your headset, or at least so it claims on the box. Now let's get into the battery testing because I've been testing these quite a bit to make sure that the claims live up to reality. So I've had the Quest 3 at like 42% battery before I attached the head strap, really to make sure and see what the battery strap would do in regards to charging the, the headset. Would it be enough to keep it at 42? Would it still drain? Would it be able to charge it up at the same time? What would the battery life of the head strap be by the time I finished testing. And so after an hour of gameplay, the battery of the Quest 3 had increased from 42% to 58% and the battery head strap was around about 50% depleted. So not only has it provided you enough power for gaming for the last hour, but it's also charged your Quest 3 up more at the same time. So it's delivering more power than the Quest 3 needs in order for it to run. And that's whilst playing a whole plethora of games, whether it's standard games or mixed reality pass through, which generally is a bit of a battery suck. And so all of that is absolutely awesome. So you're definitely gonna get the extra two to three hours of extra advertised battery life with these head straps, because it's the same battery on both of them. One nifty feature that these battery straps do have is that they have pass-through charging. So when you do need to charge these and plug them into a USB-C cable, if it's plugged into something that can provide at least 45 watts of power, it will use 25 watts to charge the headset and the rest to charge the battery. So you only have to have one cable plugged into the back to charge both. So you don't have to keep plugging the cable on the side in and out in order to charge them both. That is a really cool feature. So for people that don't have docking stations and everything else, having it all in one place where you don't have to keep taking it apart all the time is really gonna help look after your Quest 3 and also protect the USB-C port as well. So with either of these, you will be getting enough battery power such that you will be getting a lot more gameplay out of your Quest 3 or your Quest 3 S. And which style you end up getting really is a personal preference. But no matter which style you do get, I don't think you can really go far wrong with either of these. Price-wise, the K4 Boost is gonna cost you $70 and the H4 Boost is going to cost you 80. I will put purchase links and also a discount code in the description down below so that you can go check them out for yourself. If you do want to look at some alternatives, then be sure to check out the link up here. 
If you've liked this video, then please don't forget to like and share it. Consider subscribing if you're not. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.